Hi guys. So one of the things that really irks me is seeing a badly arranged bookshelf. In contrast to that, one of the things that brings me immense pleasure is to see it neatly arranged. There's no better feeling than spending an entire day browsing through all of your books and then arranging them in a specific way on your shelf. To be honest, I think why I love doing this is because for the majority of my childhood and young adult life, I never had a bookshelf. I used to have drawers and drawers stuffed with books, but I never really thought of getting a bookshelf built to display them. In fact, one of my earliest memories is pulling all of my books out of my drawers, arranging them all around my room and pretending that I was browsing through a book fair. I even had a fake cash register to ring up my own books. Yeah. I was always a bit of a dork like that. But basically, that pretend book fair that I used to have was the only time I got to actually physically see all of my books displayed around me, and it was the only time I got to see them all together. And I loved doing it. So now when I actually own a bookshelf, doing this activity of again pulling out all of my books and then neatly arranging them to display them is something that I find so much fun and I love doing it because like I said, I'm a major dork. Okay, so as you guys can see, what I've done is that I took out all of my books and then I kind of clustered them together into categories which I feel fit together and I have put them back on my shelf. Um to be honest, there's not like a very clear system of how I have arranged these because I don't have a lot of books belonging to the same genre. I don't have a lot of book series over here. These are just the books that I had left behind before moving to Singapore. So it's not the best like classification or like ordering of books, but I've tried my best to group them aesthetically. So kind of like what I have done is over here are some of my book series. Then like literally almost all of these shelves are standalone books and how i've sort of segregated these is that over here i think i have put my indian fiction books and then the rest are just like all of the other standalones regardless of genre there are some fantasy standalones there are classics there are i think also historical fiction and also memoirs if i'm not mistaken like it's a whole bunch of stuff all together but they're all standalone so they go in these shelves and then over here i have a few more series so not the best classification but it works i guess Another thing that I love about rearranging books on a bookshelf is that it lets you discover books that you had completely forgotten about. I found so many of my grandfather's books, my grandmother's books, my mom's and dad's books in this process, and some of them honestly sound so interesting that I want to dive right in. We're always in such a rush to buy new books, always in a rush to check out the latest bestseller that's trending, always in a rush to keep up with what's happening on Bookstagram or BookTube, that we tend to forget the gems that we or our loved ones have accumulated. And I feel like we should all give some time to just slow down and rediscover our bookshelves, to rediscover our past tastes, you know, the genres, authors, and even book covers that once caught our fancy. 
and here is the final bookshelf i am really really happy with how it looks now finally it is neat my mom also found these really cute things <laughs> to put on it as well and i really like how it's turned out let me show you how i've kind of arranged them because it's not a really good organization process that i've used but it looks aesthetic ish so up here i have a few of my series so there's twilight there is the divergent series there is lord of the rings and this one which is based on the wizard of oz now this one is basically a combination of literary fiction as well as um young adult fiction and this stack over here is mainly my indian fiction books now this shelf is basically a mixture of standalone fantasies uh, a few classics and also a few mystery books and thrillers this one here is a continuation of the standalone fantasy as well as some historical fiction as well as some non-fiction <laughs> and a few thrillers all kind of mixed in <laughs> this tiny shelf over here is basically all of my tall books because the shelf is so like narrow and i mean taller books i felt would look better on this shelf rather than anywhere else and this one is basically more of my cd so we have a song of ice and fire there is heartstopper there is um the hunger game series i'm missing my hunger games book like the first book because i think someone borrowed it and never gave it back then i have the lunar chronicles again i'm missing the first one because i believe i gave it to someone um as a giveaway i think it was gadha gadha if you're watching this i think i'd given you my cinder book um when i just started fandom newbie so i think that's really cool and then this here is uh the chicken soup books which i read as a teenager um also while i was rearranging all of these books i actually found a few books on my shelf that i had never read some of these books are from like 2008 or something i bought them when i was in school and college and i never read these books so i thought that i would share them with you guys because i plan on reading them now and maybe i'll film like a video or a vlog about them So the first book that I found was I am the Messenger by Marcus Zusak. This book is written by the same author who wrote The Book Thief which is one of my absolute favorite books and after reading The Book Thief I remember I immediately went and bought this book but I don't know why I never read it. This book is basically about this 19 year old cab driver named Ed Kennedy who is extremely basic <laughs> and just like a really normal person who doesn't do anything extraordinary until one day he gets these playing cards in the mail and they are sent by this anonymous person and these playing cards basically have these addresses written on them and ed kennedy's life completely changes because then he has to go and i believe help the people who are staying at those addresses so it's kind of written like a thriller is what i believe but it's also supposed to be a really feel good book and it's supposed to be really really funny which i don't know because the book theme was a very emotional book but this one is supposed to be super funny so i'm really really excited to read this book The next book is The Perfect Murder by uh Jack Hit and it has like five other authors. This book actually is a library book from 1991. Uh my father I guess had borrowed this book from a library near Chicago because he lived in Chicago at that point in time and he never returned it. <laughs> So this is like a, a very very overdue library book, but the premise is super interesting because it's basically about this editor Jack Hit who writes to these five authors pretending to be a man who wants to murder his wife, and he's basically asking these authors for the best possible scenario in which he should murder his wife without being caught. So it's kind of like seeing the. different perspective of all of these authors and how they would go about committing the perfect murder i think that's a really really cool premise and i cannot wait to read this also because i haven't heard of any of these authors i guess they were famous in the 80s but yeah it sounds really cool and i'm waiting to dive in 
The next book is 44 Scotland Street by Alexander McCall Smith. This book is basically about all of the tenants who live in this this building in Edinburgh, which is at 44 Scotland Street. Um, if you guys have ever watched um, the cartoon Hey Arnold, uh, Arnold used to live in like this really quirky building in his city, whichever city it was. But the tenants of that building were super quirky and they all got into each other's business and they were very nosy neighbors and it was just a very, very quirky like apartment building and I kind of get that vibe from this book because I feel like this book will dive into the relationship dynamics of all of these people who live at this address and it will talk about their lives and basically it'll just be like uh, an outsider kind of getting a peek into the lives of these really quirky people or at least I hope that's how this book is and yeah I can't wait to read it because of that. The next book is The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. Now, this book is about 18-year-old Nella who gets married into a very wealthy family in Amsterdam. And basically, she starts discovering all of the secrets of that family. Now, this is set in 1686 where like the society in Amsterdam is very God-fearing and the secrets that Nella discovers about her family is like it potentially puts them in a lot of danger and is life threatening i think or something like that so i guess it's about how they kind of save themselves and i don't know how the miniaturist is involved in all of this but it just sounds like a really really interesting historical fiction book and i don't know why i never read this but i'm really Okay, so my battery completely died on my camera and I'm finishing up this video on my phone right now. But basically, I was talking about The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. And I was saying how I feel this is a really, really interesting historical fiction. And I don't know why I never read this book before, but I'm waiting to give it a try right now. And the last book that I want to talk about is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. Now, this book, I know why I never read because I find it super duper intimidating. Um, this book just seems really, really heavy. Um, I'm not really sure about the writing. I've read some very mixed reviews about it on Goodreads where some people have given it like five out of five stars, whereas some people have given it one star because they find it super slow and draggy and... Like there's just a, there's, there is a lot of like philosophy apparently jarred in this book by the author, um, and the pace of the book is supposed to be like sluggish. So I don't know if I'm gonna give this a try, but I really want to because people have said amazing things about this book, but also not so amazing things. So I don't know. But basically, this is set I think in the 1500s or like 1600s. I don't know, somewhere I think in the 15 or 1600s in a monastery and basically there's like a serial killer or something, there's a murderer who is killing the monks in the monastery and um, someone has to solve the murder. That's all I know about it, apart from the fact that there is a lot of philosophy jhadoed in this book as well. So yeah, I don't know when I'll get around to reading this, but I am willing to give it a try right now let me know down in the comments if anyone has read this book and what they think about it and any tips on how i should tackle this beast but yes that is the video that i have for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below letting me know some books which have been on your bookshelf that you have not read yet and that you really really want to get around to reading and of course, do subscribe to my channel for more book-related videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.